Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Good. Welcome. Welcome to the town hall. Welcome to Fund 4 lunch. Welcome to Fund 3 governance phase lunch. Uh, happy, happy, exciting day. They have celebration. Uh, they have achievement. Um, let me share. Let me fire up the slides. It's really, yeah, seeing that, um, seeing that little little rocket icon really means a lot to me. Uh, fun too. We had some, uh, we had some delays. You know, there was like a lot of uh, kind of like a staggered deployment, but here we are smoothly launching launching Fun Three Governance. How incredible is that? Uh, I want to welcome you to the experiment. Things can break. Lack of communication differ greatly between iterations. Disorient, overload, and inspire. We're all of us together here to provide a safe and lively environment for you to explore your highest potential. How well can you collaborate with other humans to lead to great outcomes? And today we call you to register to vote. And I want to thank all the people that brought us to this moment. It's quite, uh, I want to call them from now on uh, the stewards of Catalyst, okay? The people who, who maintain, who build this, uh, this, this decentralized collaborative system for you. So thank you, Nemanja, Michael, Derek, Daniel, Enzo, Eugene, Andrew, Marek, Giacomo, Augustina, Juan, Florencia, German, Binsheng, Roman, Maria, Dimitro, Aparna, Jay, Roman, Charles, Tamara, Tim, Haley, Anna, Rod, Eric, Richie, Kevin, Philip, Alex, Matthias, Darko, Nicola, Junko, Niam, Lara, Samuel, John, both Michaels, Robert, Victor, Jake, and Carlos. Look at all these people that have been working really hard to provide you this experience. Um, thank you guys. I'm proud of you. You did an amazing work. I want to thank all of those in this community that care, that show their leadership, that show their dedication, our community advisors, our that that uh, basically set up uh, for for fund three a, a whole new assessment phase, set up a whole new process. Uh, we're debating and decided and executing for long, long hours. Um, really, really impressive stuff for our proposers, for. The, the the selected cohort of fund to proposers that are working hard to bring the ROI uh, to to fulfill our intentions uh, for the voters, for all the communicators out there, and for also for the lurkers who are waiting for the right time to spring up and meaningfully engage with us. I want to thank you. Uh, specifically, I want to thank for those who were very active uh, generating the the new assessment the reviewing the reviewing phase, uh, mentioning my name, Danny, Greg, and Steve, but also there's like, I don't know, around 50 other veteran CAs that, that came on board and made like really significant contributions. And uh, and if, if we manage to get Greg for, to talk here, we will talk about it a bit more. Uh, we also did the collaborative work with the community to set the challenges for Fund4. So I really want to thank uh, Peyton, Greg, Eva, James, Vukasin, Michael, Tom, and both Steve's uh, for joining us in the workshop to, to define this. Thank you so much. So today we're going to start, we're going to invite Charles to give a keynote. We're going to introduce Catalyst because there are thousands of new participants who might be asking themselves, what is Catalyst? We'll talk about how to register. We'll introduce the new fund for challenges, and we'll give instructions about how to participate in the first week of fund four, which is the insight sharing stage. So, um, saying that, uh, do we have Charles on board? I would love to invite him on the stage. Wow, I see 805 people, incredible. 
And we're just getting started. Good morning, Dor. How's warm, sunny California? It is very sunny here. That's kind of great. And it was negative 10 outside here in warm, sunny Colorado. But it's always warm and sunny, sometimes Colorado. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Crowdcast. Welcome to Catalyst. This is a very special event. And everything we do is pretty revolutionary and pretty amazing. And I'm so excited to be here. This is one of the birds. You know, there's several birds for February and some might bleed into March. But this one's one of the closest and nearest and dearest to my heart because it is really a validation of two things. Uh, big things have small beginnings and the slow way is the fast way. You see, we're not building just some treasury system and say, oh, okay, here's how you get some money to do something. We are really building a government for a cryptocurrency. And we're building a growth engine for a movement, an ecosystem. And I tend to look at things on a long time horizon. I say, what can I do today that will be most meaningful in 2025 and 2030, 2035 and so forth? So when we started the Catalyst Project, what we were looking for were the right growth factors and the right community that iteration by iteration by iteration, systematically, we could build our way up to a system that could govern millions and eventually billions and decide how do we grow, how do we sustain what we have, and then how do we make decisions about things that are controversial? Uh, where do we go? You know, How do we evolve, especially when there's so much infrastructure going around? And how do we make sure it's balanced, it's fair, it's egalitarian? It's one of the hardest things you can do, and humans aren't so good at it because no one's really happy with their existing governance. But you know what? We do hard stuff here because that's the fun stuff. That's the interesting stuff. And we have the best community. We have the brightest community and you're all over the world. So hell, let's go do it. And I can't do it. I'm just one guy. But if I'm one guy with 10,000 people, and by the way, that's what we're looking at with Fun4, uh, then we'll make huge progress. And that will inspire 90,000 more to come. And then it'll be one guy with 100,000 people which will inspire 900,000 more to come. And it'll be one guy with a million people. You know what that is? That's an army, an army for change, not only in our industry, but the world as a whole. So to the brass tacks, we have had so much work to do as a development company. And I personally like to thank Dor and his team uh, and the developers for uh, working hand in glove with the community to get so much done so quickly. Uh, we have tighter integration with Daedalus now. We have tighter integration with Uroi now. A special thank you to Sebastian. I think it's just him and five, five guys living in a basement somewhere, writing code 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It, it's amazing how much progress they make so quickly. And we're very glad to see that there's a tighter integration of Catalyst into these products, which means that it's going to become easier to register, easier to vote fund by fund. And every fund, we're going to continue evolving until eventually we have a beautiful voting center and a beautiful voting experience. And that's going to be right when we start seeing that 10,000 turn to 100,000. In terms of numbers, I believe we have over 8,000 participants. I can't name all of you because, well, we'd be here forever. So let me just give you a blanket thank you for being part of this. And it's hard. It's a lot of work. There's a lot to think about. Our job is to make sure that we keep giving tools to make your participation more meaningful and more interesting. So on our side, uh, working with the Cardano Foundation, we've begun talking to accelerators and we've begun discussing a lot about uh, what happens post-funding. So Fund uh, 2 was a lot of fun. Fund 3 is a lot of fun. Fund 4 is just beginning. And we're going to go from a few projects that got funded to dozens to hundreds very quickly. But how do those projects communicate to the Cardano community their progress? And who, how do we hold them accountable and make sure that they stay on schedule for the funds that they receive? This is a big topic, and it's something that our company is quite interested in, the foundation is quite interested in. And so uh, we've been talking to uh, programs like the MIT Accelerator guys, I, and uh, we've been talking to others, trying to see if we can graph something on the Catalyst project like we've done with IdeaScale post-funding so that people can roll into a more structured system to help them get their ideas, whatever they may be, to the next level and potentially give them access to venture capital funding and other such things. So we'll make some announcements about specifics in the coming days, uh, but we've been talking to a lot of different programs, trying to find the right one. The other thing is I get about six emails on average a day from various people in the community 
uh, who have been talking about uh, you know, crazy ideas, great ideas, whatever they might be. And I really appreciate those, and those are great, but it's telling me I have the wrong funnel. Uh, people shouldn't be emailing me to do a Cardano project. They should be participating in Catalyst because that's what we've constructed it for. So Dor's going to talk to Adam Bates. He's our chief marketing officer, and he's also going to talk to um, our Mike Sesco, our, our UX guy. And we're going to make sure that in a reasonable time horizon, we build a beautiful funnel. And then I can just give a single link and say, okay, whatever your Cardano idea is, here you go. And the community has that, and it's just paint by numbers. It's very easy for people to come in and participate and take their ideas through a crucible that if they're really solid and sound, they can go to a point where not only can they get funded, but they can put coalitions together and help execute. Uh, we're seeing a great stress test already of what we have. I think there are seven challenge problems that we have running in parallel with uh, Fund 4, and this is just beginning. I, I could entirely see dozens of them running uh, by the end of the year, and uh, many people, very serious people coming in and achieving that. So it's really important at this point that we start making sure that the social dynamics stay meaningful and that uh, there are a lot of tools for everybody to use. Um, we're also going to start encouraging some people in our network whom we think can add enormous amounts of value to Cardano instead of saying, hey, go to the foundation or go to IOHK and ask for a grant or you know some commercial relationship, just start pushing through uh, Catalyst and making the case. And this can be everything from development companies that are doing interesting things, researchers that want interesting research programs uh, to, to go over a long arc of time, university relationships, uh, token migrations from Ethereum and other platforms and so forth. Uh, Catalyst is going to become the perfect vehicle for that. And you, the community, uh, basically get to participate on strategy. Okay, this is not my strategy. This is not the strategy of a small group of people. This is a collective intelligence that we're constructing. And if we've done our job correctly, that collective intelligence will be far superior to anything uh, that is done by a single company, a single group. It's uh, much better. These social dynamics have to materialize. So the advisor and expert class uh, as Catalyst gets more sophisticated and the incentives get more aligned, it's going to be absolutely essential uh, as we start pushing people this way. And once people figure out there's real money to be gained here, you're going to see a huge, huge amount of proposals coming from outside of Cardano, uh, people coming in, and some of them from bigger companies than you'd imagine uh, who are actually very excited about this. Now, on our side at IOHK, what we're going to do is we're going to start developing uh, some uh, internal people who help newer companies who are outside of our ecosystem find ways of collaborating with Catalyst in a lower friction way, because it's still a little friction filled. And that in itself actually can become a business model. For example, uh, many of you may not know this, we apply for government grants all the time for R&D, like Horizons 2020 and you know other such things. And uh, we actually sometimes work with third-party agencies that help us apply for those grants, and we share and the, uh, the bounty if uh, successful. I can imagine that an entire class of people will start emerging who provide those services for Catalyst grants uh, and uh, basically help people shepherd through the process to maximize their ability to get funding, especially as the funding levels increase. So what I want to convey to you is that when people say, how can I be part of Cardano? It's not just buying ADA or something like that. There are thousands of ways for people to participate. And some of those ways can be just as simple as helping people go through Catalyst, challenging people who are trying to go through Catalyst. Once people have gotten through the Catalyst program, assisting them on the other side, take it to the next level and honor the commitments that they have made and make sure that they get them done. It's a pipeline. And what we try to do in our company, working with our partners, Emergo and the CF, is make sure that all the tools are in place to maximize the chance of success and maximize the growth in this ecosystem. But what you can do as a community is take that pipeline and supercharge it. It could be as simple as referring people to Catalyst. And we need to make sure there's a great funnel for that. But once it's in place or with the existing one, teaching them how to use it and how to participate. It can be as complex as I want to pivot my entire business model to be on Cardano and do something for Cardano, wherever that might be. Catalyst should be able to serve that entire set. 
So Fund 4 is extremely exciting. And the fact that now we have reached a million dollars of value, uh, that's a milestone. And it will seem small in short order, but it's quite significant if you really think about it. My first venture in the cryptocurrency space had half that funding, half a million dollars. And it allowed me to bootstrap a career that has just been wild. And given that twice as much is available, and in just six to eight weeks, another fund will be uh, going and it'll even be more sophisticated, likely with more and more challenge problems. Uh, this is really the beginning of something I think is going to grow exponentially. And it's going to fundamentally transform venture capital. It's going to fundamentally transform growth in our entire industry. And if we really get it right, it's a reusable model for every single token issued on Cardano. A lot of people don't know this, but our native asset standard is built in a very special way that the native assets are treated as first-class citizens as ADA. So next week, February 24th, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, initiate the hard fork combinator event to upgrade Cardano to support native assets. We call this the Mary HFC event. What that means is now Cardano is going from a single asset system to a multi-asset system, and you the community get to issue your own tokens. I expect to see catalysts flooded with lots of crazy, cool, interesting token ideas. You know, maybe somebody wants to build a Pokemon NFT competitor. I might even pitch an idea. I've been thinking a lot about AI and NFT, and I might do a special whiteboard video on it just because you guys love that so much. Uh, and here's the thing. Those tokens that you issue, all the things that ADA does, they will do. In that, they can go through locking. They'll benefit from the multi-sig. The paper wallet generator, when that comes into Daedalus, is going to be available for years. So you can build paper wallets for a multi-asset. Uh, you know, all the security features are going to be there. We've written multi-asset support into the Rosetta uh, integration for exchanges. So make it very easy for exchanges to list your asset. Uh, also, the governance stack for Catalyst, all these voting mechanics are going to work for your multi-asset as well. So what if you have an asset with its own monetary policy? Well, then it could have a treasury system and we can reuse the catalyst mechanics and the catalyst community to manage the treasury of that particular asset. And none of this code has to be rewritten. It's just a turnkey solution over an arc of time. This is the power and magic of this, that you all uh, can not only have a vocation worrying about the growth of Cardano, but all things issued on Cardano can reuse Cardano's infrastructure, and you can worry about the growth of those ecosystems as well and make your career the career of crypto and decentralization. It's a unique time, and it's a unique framework. Dor has a phenomenal vision, and his team has a great vision. And I love the humility, the joy, and the passion that they bring. Uh, it's astounding to try to do something so crazy and so big and actually see meaningful progress towards it. And it's astounding to convince now 8,000 people to go along the road with us in Catalyst. And I cannot wait to keep doing these keynotes. And every time I do it, to see those numbers go up, the success go up. And I can't wait next year to talk about all the successful projects. A few housekeeping items. Uh, in short order, we're going to announce the Gogan Summit for uh, Cardano to celebrate smart contracts being in our ecosystem and the applications coming into our ecosystem. Uh, if you are a DAP developer and you want to do something, if you get funded through Catalyst, you're guaranteed an invitation to the Gokin Summit. Love to see you there. Love to see you showcase your project. It's a chance for the community to say, what have you done for us? And it's a chance for you to share your passion, your dreams uh, with people on a very broad stage. We had over 10,000 people attend the Shelley Summit, making it one of the most attended cryptocurrency summits in the entire industry last year. I would like to break that and have 20 to 30,000 attend uh, through a uh, probably a hybrid summit, but maybe it'll be completely online. We'll see based on Corona. Uh, another housekeeping item, uh, we have the Cardano 360 episode. Uh, we're going to try to integrate some sort of community update on Catalyst projects in that. We've been talking to Tim and to Adam about how to best accommodate it, and uh, we'll get back to you on it. But if not that, then a newsletter, because it's really important that you understand your journey doesn't end after you've been funded. That's just the beginning of a new journey. And now you're in the process of building something and you're building something with a family. You're all part of that family. So thank you so much for coming. This is always exciting, this town hall. And Dora, thank you so much for all the hard work you do and your team does. 
I, it means the world to all of us. You guys are really doing remarkable things, and the entire industry is watching. Cheers, everybody. That's awesome. We got, uh, I'm watching the numbers. We have 1,300 people here uh, watching live. It's incredible. Okay, so uh, thank you so much, Charles, for all your for all your support and just believing in this in this uh, project from from day one, and and making sure that we you know you're removing the obstacles um, towards this. So really, really appreciate it. Um, we have a lot of a lot of ground to cover today. This is just the beginning. Um, let me fire up the let me fire up the slides. You know, just just be ready for a you know. There's gonna be a lot of challenges for Fund Four. It's gonna take some time. I believe this is gonna be like at least one hour of, of presentation now. So I hope you got your water and refreshments and you're sitting comfortably. Let's take you on a little journey. So what is Catalyst? Let's talk about that. So we have, let, let's talk about the goals, okay? We, we're talking about two big things for 2021. We're talking about emancipation, self-determination for the community, and we're talking about adoption, okay? The, 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 the adoption of Catalyst and adoption of developers um, building on top of Cardano. So what's emancipation you know the definition is the process of being set free from legal social or political restrictions liberation i would add, add self-determination and um, we all most of us okay 99 percent of us grew up from childhood in hierarchical systems sitting in a classroom having teachers kind of boss you around and tell you what to do and what's the rules. And you were basically, the way to succeed is basically to obey orders and be good, oblige the rules. But this does not have to continue. We can, we can cut off this, uh, this tradition and start something new, better, more liberating. So how are we going to achieve true emancipation? First of all, legitimizing catalyst okay so and we do it through voter participation we want to get to 50 percent of ada holders to participate in the in governance and also impact we're showing that it works that it's effective uh, second is about decentralized decentralization our team is working in the background on really hard uh, long-term infrastructure decentralized infrastructure but we also need to decentralize our decision making so more people more advisors more voters uh, participating in the process decentralized innovation more people that are you know building things and trying out things and experimenting with things and also leadership so not just uh, me and charles or, or 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 some other people you 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 know but actually you rising up starting to lead uh, we're talking about autonomy. Uh, we started with the community choice challenge. Now we're calling it the challenge setting challenge uh, going forward. And it's about us, the community, setting intentions for itself, like defining what problems we want to solve, what we want to prioritize. It's about the privacy, developing the private voting. So now the voting is still public, but uh, in, the future, in the near future, we're going to have uh, voting that has the same security privacy standards as regular voting in any 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 nation state okay so so you are with your conscience um, and we're going to talk and and we're working on decentralized funding so basically that uh, those funding events that happens from catalyst not not just uh, uh, there isn't like a centralized entity that uh, launches these funds but they, they get triggered from voting in an in an autonomous fashion so making us truly, you know, not just like impactful, but unstoppable. And most importantly, really most importantly, is this is a state of mind. I would say even if we all change our state of minds and just start to, 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 to collaborate and adopt the best practices of decentralized innovation, we're going to get all the things that we, all our dreams, all our goals are going to be fulfilled. Um, 
but it's hard. It's hard to change your state of mind, especially if you have a lifetime of growing in very in a hierarchical system. Then that's like the only option you've you've seen. Uh, but we're gonna deal with it through meaningful participation, through more and more engagement from the community. So in terms of catalyst adoption, okay, so that was emancipation. In terms of adoption, we're talking about adoption of catalysts. So we wanna move to uh, fund sizes of $15 million over time, every funding round. Uh, we want to move from the 8,000 members to 20,000 members, from 2% participation to 50% of voter participation, from 18,000 unique wallets voting to 20,000 unique wallet, wallet, wallets voting, from 250, 250 proposals to 1,000, from 160 active advisors to 1,000, from 30 referrers, so that, that is people who, who are um, managed to invite uh, new proposers to join our process to, to, to having to 500 referrers. And from the town hall, from having uh, average viewing about 1,500 to go to 5,000. In terms of dev adoption, we're basically moving from building, from to have hundreds of dApps that are gonna build on top of Cardano this, this year and fueled by Catalyst. So now that we know the objective, so what, how are we gonna do that? Okay, so we're doing it by answering a simple question of how can the Cardano community govern Cardano in a fair and impactful way? And you can see here the, the process, the three phases. So the first one here is the innovation phase. So this is, we're just starting for fund for the innovation phase. And this is all about how can we generate the best proposals that address the challenges that we pose. Then there's the governance phase. And then, and then the challenge here is how do we make high quality decisions and, and actually pick the best proposer, proposals from the from all the proposals that were generated in the innovation phase. And then there's execution. So once these proposals get funding, how do we make sure that the execution of those proposals is the most impactful in order to maximize the treasury ROI? And here it's not return on investment. It could be return on investment, but we actually mean return on intention. Like what's the intention that we set through challenges. And we're gonna talk about these challenges later on today in great detail. Um, so what's the, what's the magic sauce? Uh, why do we think this is better than just having a centralized company? Because, you know, I mean, I mean, of course for, for emancipation and there's all sorts of, you know, there's a value system, but there's also things that the decentralized organization can do that surpass a regular company, okay? A regular company is having a very hard time. It's very hard to pivot. It's very hard to change directions, you know, in light of, of reality and changing conditions. Like even a very good startup can only do it like maybe three times a year. And that would be like people really working overtime and really sweating a lot. With funds, we can run hundreds of experiments a year. I would even say maybe thousands of experiments a year. So we can pivot. It's more than pivoting. It's like shooting in, in all directions, exploring the opportunity space in a, several levels of magnitude better than a centralized company. Second of all, regular companies are struggling both to explore, like innovate and also exploit, like, like make use of the current innovations that they already did, like combining them. They have a 75% failure rate to combine these things but we can explore without cuffs. You know, we can both do exploration and exploitation. Uh, teams are not dependent on each other. Um, regular company, you know, it's like hiring people is a slow process. Uh, firing people is a risky process. With, with Catalyst, we can mobilize thousands of participants in a matter of weeks to tackle changing problems. Uh, in a regular company, to, to get stuff done, you need to build consensus. It's really, really long, it takes a lot of time. When you work in a decentralized fashion, you don't need consensus, you need results. The results speak for themselves. You can go a forge your path ahead, and if you, if you do your work well and you get results, you will get more funding. Uh, it's simple as that. Um, every six weeks, we launch a new fund. You can see here the timeline. We can see, we can, you can see I'm very proud that we nailed the February 17th governance phase. 
And that's really our first priority. We're going to make sure that every six weeks like clockwork, you know, funds are going to be dished out, new funds are launched, etc. This is our prime directive, the stability and, and, and safety, okay, the invoking trust and safety in the system. So when we ask what is possible, we can look at inspiration outside. We can look at something like Y Combinator, which is a, well, let's say it's a centralized innovation fund, but you can see that, you know, that it managed to fund 2,000 companies, uh, companies are worth 100 billion. I'm sure it's going, just keeps going up and up in valuation. And basically like the kind of funding they gave was around $20,000 $20, per, per company. Uh, you can look at the Ethereum ecosystem as, a, as an example of, a, of, of creating an, an innovative ecosystem with five, 520 new dApps created, um, with a large developer community, et cetera. So, I mean, we can kind of pick and choose what worked for them and what we can do a lot better. And, I'm sure, and there's a lot we can do a lot better. Um, also, you know, you look at the miracles of, of the crowds, okay? The miracle of, of this pre distributed work you look something like Linux. Anybody would have believed that Linux would beat Microsoft, um, the, 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 micro, the Windows operating system, that they even have a chance? Nobody would be believe that at first. But then they showed an open source collaborative environment uh, and also you know, strong leadership like made an alternative that surpassed Windows in many ways. You know, of course, Bitcoin. You look at the miracle of Wikipedia. And then you look at all these... Uh, innovations like GoFundMe, Kickstarter, Patreon, okay, we know that when there's a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens, we can change the world. And this is possible. So we can be, I believe catalysts can be one of those, one of those things in this list. As a true innovator, showing new ways of how we bring value and how we organize. So for you as an individual, why should you participate? First of all, this is an amazing way to interact with, with community members. That's been like the number one thing that people that engage in Catalyst so far told that they, they gained, you know, this is, there's nothing more great and meaningful than actually work on a project with, with a person to get to know him, to, to form a connection. It's also an opportunity to build something that is impactful and meaningful, a big opportunity for you to learn and grow into this, uh, this new paradigms of the 21st century collaboration, uh, earning skills that are now, uh, you know, maybe we just do it in Catalyst, maybe there's like a few other instances of it, but in the future, it's gonna be a rare and valuable skill set for you to have. It's a great way to build your reputation in the community. Uh, it's a great way for proposers, it's a way to make a living. I think for advisors, voters, it's a, it's a great way to supplement your income. Uh, doing something you love, you're passionate about. Uh, it's a way for you as an ADA token holder to actually influence the token price, you know, N not just be a, a spectator, but be a, an active participant in, in uh, you know, in increasing the, the value of, of what you own and be a true partner. And my favorite one, it's, it's about making history together. It is, it is. We're making history together. Can you believe it? Um, so there's a lot of ways to contribute. Uh, more than I list here, but I'm listing just like the principal ones. So you can be a proposer. You can create a impactful proposers. You can actually co-propose with other people together and basically like a startup has several co-founders. You can also have co-proposers for a proposal. Um, you can be a community advisor and give reviews, uh, give assessments, give feedback, help proposers improve, but also help voters make good decisions. You can be a voter, uh, basically choosing who gets to be, to be funded and you know, exercising your decision-making capability and improving the collective intelligence of the system. You can be an implementer, team up with proposers to get, uh, to get stuff done in a high quality way. You can be a referrer. So that means you can, you can, you can talk with uh, friends and family and colleagues and people you know that are like bright and creative and, and competent and bring them to propose in Catalyst. So when, when you submit a proposal, you can, uh, 
you can also submit who referred you and that referrer would re receive a reward if your proposal is funded and, and a significant reward at that. Um, so because we're starting registration, I want to talk about voting, the fund three voting first. So, you know, we, why would you like to vote? It's a, it's a chance to influence, influence the future of Cardano. It's a chance to influence the future of Catalyst. There's not only half a million dollars in ADA on the line, there's also an additional half a million dollar in ADA uh, budgeted for new challenges that are gonna get uh, launched in fund five. So this is like very, um, it's very interesting. This is exactly what I talked before about autonomy, like the opportunity for the community to set their own challenges not just the catalyst team or, or you know consulting with the community but you actually voting and deciding what's the priorities for us uh, also it's about keeping the network resilient the more participation the harder it is for someone outside to attack and like try to steal the treasury funds uh, let's get to 50 percent participation that would make it uh, nearly impossible for i think pretty much impossible for someone else to come and and try to attack us. So this is this is resilience at work, and also we're, we're sending, uh, uh, we're rewarding a seventy thousand dollars worth of ADA uh, for voters uh, to compensate them uh, for participation, and again to make history together. And 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 now I'm going to talk very concretely about history, because I believe that in Fund Three we can become the undisputed, the undisputed number one. Decentralized Innovation Fund in the world. Um, look, let, let's look at the data, okay? We have, who's, who's the largest right now? I would say Gitcoin, okay? The distributed, the Decentralized Innovation Fund. They had almost 3,000 unique wallets participating and they, they had a fund of uh, almost a million dollars. Fund two, we only had quarter million dollars and we had 1,800 unique wallets, but to register it took like four hours and you had to install a, a lot of stuff it was very it was a really a, a big uh, headache uh, to do so but now in fund three we have a half a million on the line and an extra half a million uh, for community challenges and it's an and registration is through Daedalus mainnet or your the Roy browser extension and also the whole process, we reduced it from taking about four hours to taking five minutes. I think we're gonna do this. Let's do this. So registration has already started. Like, I mean, it says in two hours, but it's already started. Um, I believe uh, our, the voting app has been upgraded. Make sure to keep it upgraded, uh, I think. I think Daedalus version 3.3.0 has been launched. And if not, it's gonna be launched in the next several hours. And I also got an update that the Uroi browser extension uh, will be updated. If, if not now, then in the next few hours. And we have basically two weeks uh, for to get as many people to register as possible. This is the date of the snapshot. This is when you need uh, funds to be at your wallet. Okay, so keep note of this the, the, the snapshot date, the registration ends date. Then we'll have three weeks of voting and then like another few weeks of tallying the votes and, and sending funding to to all the all the win winners. So let me show you a really quick demo how registration looks like. Okay, so that's us uh, okay, that was really fast. Done. Okay. Um live demos are amazing. Okay, so you basically make a registration transaction in the voting center, then you wait around the, it should be, oh, sorry. Video embedded in slides are hard, okay. But, you know, you basically need to wait around five minutes, probably even less. You need to input the pin code 
remember the pin code don't forget your pin code and then it would generate your registration QR code download the QR code you must download the QR code if you lose your QR code or you lose your pin code you will not be able to vote trust me don't be don't come back to me complaining when um, when when you ask you when voting starts to input again your QR code and you don't have it or you don't remember the pin code but that's it that's how easy it is um, also as I said we support the Uroi browser extension I don't have a video of it but I'm sure it will be published some kind of tutorial will be published soon just know that it's the browser extension not the mobile app yet but probably next fund also will have mobile Uroi support if you're an SPO, you can register. Uh, you know, you can you, you can you can you can register with the the pledge. Just go go follow this link. Anna, I hope you're sharing that. Uh, we really made 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 it, this tool much better than in Fun Two. So, uh, you know, please share comments on the GitHub page if if there's even more stuff that needs to be improved. Um the one thing important about registration is that uh, you might have the voting app on your phone, the Catalyst voting, but it's not up to date. You need to update it. You need to make sure that you have version, uh, uh, I think it's like 1.1.7, uh, um, the latest one. So you need to go to the Google Play Store, iOS Store, Make sure that it's uh, you know you load it properly and update your app. Otherwise, it won't work. So please do that. Memorize your pin code. Download the PDF, or if you're using Euro, you have to take a screenshot of your QR code. You can also take a picture with your camera. But save a copy of your QR code. Don't lose your QR code. You're gonna need both of them again when voting starts. Um, as I said, this is this is the snapshot date. This is the time when we look at the at the blockchain and look um, how much uh, ADA uh, you have staked, and that is that is used to calculate your voting power. So make sure that at least twenty minutes before the deadline, and let's say like an hour later, you know you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have these funds in your wallet during the snapshots. Otherwise, it doesn't count. Uh, of course, we will announce uh, when the snapshot is exactly taken in the Catalyst Telegram announcement, cha announcement channel. So you can follow that channel. I'll share a link at the end of this town hall, how to, how to get to the announcement channel. Um, last thing, so that concludes registration. Good luck. This is a collective effort for everybody here. Let's make some noise. Let's get, let's see how far we can get, how much, if we can get to be to be called the undisputed number one um, decentralized innovation fund in the planet. Let's get it done. Um, one more thing. So we just finished, you know, not only we launched Fund3 governance phase, we also launched Fund3, uh, we also concluded Fund3 innovation phase. Please follow this link and give us feedback on how we can improve that innovation phase. So this is just about the innovation phase. We're asking you two questions there. What was your favorite thing? And we're also asking you to suggest one thing to improve. And I want to give you a pro tip. If you're going to say something really generic, something like, oh, it was very complicated, okay, or, or something like that, that's not gonna move the needle. It's gonna, not gonna, we can't work with that feedback. What we want is you to be concrete. Talk, talk to us about something in the UX that can be proved, something in the specific in the communications that can be enhanced, you know, give concrete examples of where, when, what was observed, uh, what was your ex expectation and what was observed when, you, when you're writing this feedback. It just makes it so much easier for us to actually act on it. Um, so good luck with that. That's really important for us and to improve the system. All right, I'm gonna take a sip of, of coffee. <laughs> okay. 
Let's talk about Fund4, Fund4 Innovation, and let's talk about the new challenges. And, and I just want to, to say that if I had to pick just one feature from Catalyst, and what's, what's our killer feature? You know, what's the, what's the thing that makes us special? It's the challenge setting, okay? It's the idea that we can collectively go set challenges. You know, we can choose hard, wicked problems, not just, uh, you know, not like uh, simple problems that you can like, uh, you know, outsource, but really hard challenges. We can then rapidly deploy solutions for those challenges. And then we can look uh, which solutions stuck, you know, what kind, of, what kind of return on intention we got from the original challenge. Did we actually manage to solve it? And if we do the, did a good job, and if the ROI is high, then great, let's do more. Let's double down. Let's make this challenge bigger. The ROI was not, was not great. We can say, OK, let's, let's solve other things that we may be more better at solving. Uh, so we would reduce it. So we're introducing an evolutionary model of challenges that they evolve from fund to fund. And eventually, we get to a set of challenges that we're really, really awesome at, at, at solving. And we keep trying new things and see how they stick. So in this evolutionary model and the simplicity of it also, that you just need to set the challenges and see what happens. And of course, you know, see what happens. It's like, you know, we all work really hard. But, but as a collective, you know, um, we have this superpower. That, that normally collectives don't have. And uh, that's, that's, a, that's very special. So, and in this, we're going to do a big, uh, we're going to test. We're going to test the edges of, of this capability, of this feature. We're really going to push ourselves this time. And, and I'm, I can't say in confidence that we're going to nail it, okay? This is more like we did some, we're doing something super ambitious, uh, trying to see our limits. Um, if we can, if we can do this, and and the big question is, can we do six challenges in parallel? Okay, this is like a huge leap. It's actually seven, because we have also the challenge setting, and you can see the the allocations for the dev ecosystem. So um, for each each one of the challenges, I would just say that there's, you know, the dev ecosystem and depth and integration, uh, both are you know ab about uh, developer adoption. Okay, as, as we talked about the, the bigger goals. And the four smaller ones, these are seeds, these are challenge seeds, small, small challenges, just to see if they, if they're, if we get ROI on them and if they should be grow and extend. And this is all about actually evolving and improving Catalyst itself. It's about getting better, making better decisions, uh, having high, uh, increasing the quality of proposals, uh, engaging more people in, inside Catalyst, and of course, like, uh, this is like a special challenge from the CF. It's about community hubs and, and sorry, it's, the name of the challenge is not community hubs. It's about, it's a com community centers, I believe. Um, so I just like this uh, slide is out of date, but uh, anyway, we're gonna talk about the challenge, but it's about um, lighting a fire and, and, and seeing how we can go local, not just global. And it's about making, setting new challenges okay so another half a million dollars in ada budgeted for new challenges that are going to be deployed in uh, in fund six and actually here also I, I i screwed up with the name it's not community choice it's going to be a challenge uh, fund six uh, challenge setting beyond that there's a lot of incentives that are going to be distributed um $130,000 is going to be sent to voter, different voters for participating, $50,000 for advisors for uh, reviewing, $20,000 for referrers, uh, referring new proposers. Let's look at, uh, let's look, let's take a shallow dive into each one of those challenges. And uh, somewhere, kind of probably tomorrow, we're going to publish, you will see a different ID scale with, with the updated challenges and each for each challenge, there will be a, a much more detailed brief that, than, than what I'm describing here. And, and so that's like the deep dive, but I'm just wanted to give you an overview so you can start to, start to think about it, start to think about proposals, submissions for proposals in next week.
So let's start about, so let's talk about developer ecosystem. This is the main challenge. Uh, and this is the biggest thing that can be, that can be done uh, today to bring value to Cardano. Uh, we want to, the question is how, this is why we, we doubled the funding, okay, from, from, from fund three. How can we create a positive developer experience that helps the developer focus on building successful apps or dApps? Okay, so this is about all the infrastructure that is required. I would say it, 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 it's, it's a two-sided two thing, okay? One, one side is, you know, can we make it easy? Okay, can we simplify the work for developers? Can we build with frameworks, with uh, testing frameworks, with uh, the right libraries, uh, the right APIs, uh, the right integrations with developer tools, uh, with the right learning materials, to just make it easier, the, the perceived cost of, of developing a Cardano to, to lower it dramatically. That's one edge, that's one one side of the equation. The other side is, you know, how can we make it like enjoyable and exciting and fun and motivating and rewarding and successful? How can we, you know, so the perceived benefit, how can we make that higher? How can we create a, a, a supportive developer community um, that is satisfying, that gives you a good experience, uh, you, you, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's not just making things it's easy, it's making things satisfying and, 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 and helping people see how they can be successful by developing. Okay, so this is a big challenge, a lot of funding going for it. And we're gonna look at the end of the challenge and ask ourselves, was there a good experience and successful dApps created thanks to our efforts? So, and the first metric is gonna be really interesting because this is also be community driven. So we're gonna make a list of gaps uh, of like what what needs to be added to our to our developer ecosystem to make it a good experience and and uh, and allows allow that to be successfully created and we're gonna define it together. So actually, the in our this uh, the first week of Catalyst, the exploration stage, the inside sharing stage. Um, we're going to ask you to name that to name gaps that exist to name your requests of what what needs to be what needs to be filled and other people can also give kudos to that and we're going to compose out of all your inputs uh, and we're asking specifically for developers to put their input there um, we're going to make a list out of it and 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 we and we'll see how much of this list is get checked by initiatives that are launched uh, thanks to this challenge Okay, so that would be on a D scale that would be launching tomorrow. You will go into the challenge and you can start to name gaps. I think this is going to be incredible experiment in collective, in collective intelligence and see if we can define the problem really well, define the gaps really well, uh, so we can build effective solutions to solve them. And of course, we're going to look at how many developers are actively building on top of Cardano thanks to our efforts. How many repos on GitHub are using the, the tooling that was developed and, and, and also the, the rate of increase, the month over month increase in the number. Um, and we're also setting a big goal for ourselves. This is a really, really, really big goal, but I think this community can figure it out. It might not happen in a month. It might take uh, several months up to a year, but we want to reduce the wait time for developers that have a question uh, to, to, to under 24 hours, okay? So, so, you know, that someone who actually really wants to build on top of Cardano can do it and can, and can do it and not get stuck or blocked. And of course, this is a bit harder to measure and, you know, we need to think about how to measure it exactly, maybe some kind of a survey, having a sense of community and conversations. So you have people around to talk with, uh, share your passion, a sense of community. One challenge down, six more to go. So let's talk about the dApps and integrations challenge. So this is like the next evolutionary step for 
what we call the DAP creation challenge, and we're adding integrations. So not just like creating a novel DAPs on top of Cardano, but also integrating existing stuff in, in, in the Cardano, into Cardano, with Cardano. Uh, so the big question is how can application developers drive adoption of Cardano in 2021? So um, just to make it clear the difference between these two challenges. So, so the dev ecosystem challenge is about developers, right? Like, like the target is the developer experience, having a good developer experience. And now this is all about the end users, right? Like, like people solving real world problems and having actual users going and adopting. So using, using dApps. Uh, so it's very important to make this distinction and, and understanding the difference between the two. And it's gonna be at $200,000. And, and we're gonna ask ourselves if these dApps and integrations actually generated adoption. Okay, so we have a nice, we, we had like a great, uh, um, we had some great people uh, working on the metrics here for this challenge and, and uh, so it's very, very precise uh, what we're gonna measure and we're gonna look at the usage of the applications developing during the challenge and we're going to look at the viability of the applications that develop during the challenge. Uh, so, you know, not just like, uh, uh, you know, vaporware, Okay, but we look at if, it, if they're sustainable, if they keep growing, if they keep being active, if those creators of them made profit, you know, we, we, we're gonna make it for real. You know, it's not like vanity metrics and that's really, really important. Okay, now we're transitioning to the, so these were like, it's okay, so as you can see, those two were uh, 600,000 out of the million. Okay, now now we're getting to the to the smaller ones the seed challenges and that's that are all about uh, generating a leadership layer for catalyst like decentralizing the leadership uh, so we're giving opportunity here for the community to to improve all sorts of aspects within catalyst and within the process uh, in a way that they can do it you know maybe even full time and be super committed and and make uh, sizable contributions so the first one is about distributed decision-making and we're gonna ask ourselves, how can we help the Catalyst community to get better at distributed decision-making within the next two Catalyst rounds? Okay, so short-term, you know, we have a lot of, we have millions of dollars on the line and we need to level up our decision-making capacity. This is a hard problem, this is a wicked problem you know, I would say that even if I gave, put $10 million on this problem, I'm not sure if it's gonna be solved. The only way to address it is iterations, experimentation, trying, trying methodologies, adapting best practices, looking at research, uh, trying innovative stuff, and also a lot of training, um, training people to be to be good decision decision makers and and uh, and assessors, and how to share insights between us. All these all these aspects of collective intelligence. There's so much to do. I mean, I, I would say this is probably the the challenge I'm most excited about, and something I've been thinking harder a lot about for for many years, uh, especially during my PhD. Um, so, you know, I kind of like really personally, I'm going to be involved there somehow. Um, and I want, I, you know, just please go, go for it. This is going to have so much impact. And I would even say something else. I think this, this decision-making problem is so fundamental to our success that I really want to encourage people to just go and start stuff, do stuff. Don't, don't wait to get funded. Like just start stuff with the stuff you started, with the impact that's already shown about processes you've implemented. Come, come to the community, ask for, ask in it, let me upgrade it even further, let me expand it, or even reward me for the contributions I've done. But this, we need to start this today, okay? But let's not wait for uh, uh, three months, you know, until the funding is uh, provided. Let's start working on it right now and and you know first do then ask for permission that that's my thing that would be 
a great way to catalyze better decision making. So looking at how, how we are getting better at distributed decision making has a lot of different things to look at. We're going to look at the confidence of the community. We're going to survey people about how people are looking at the decision making process, how people are looking at the outcomes, like the choices that are being made and if they're happy with it. We're going to look at the number of participants that are contributing. Uh, we're going to look at individual initiatives that uh, that increase participation. We're going to look at how we iterate and and see that there's evidence that our, the pain points are being addressed and uh, every round and we're, we're not dropping balls. Uh, we're going to look at re-election rates. So basically, you know, if, if there's like a team of proposers that, you know, win again and again, it's like, it, it means that we probably made the wise choice, right? Like, like we chose someone and now we trust him enough to do more stuff. So uh, that's a good indicator of good decision making, you know, as long as there's no cheating, right? But, uh, you know, that's like a different element there. And also it's about uh, embracing failure, okay? Can we, what kind of value and learning can, can, can we get from the proposals that didn't work out? Uh, even, for, uh, and also for any initiative inside Catalyst that didn't work out, can, are, we, are we learning or are we like a goldfish, okay, that forgets? I think it's a myth that he forgets everything in 60 seconds, but you know, it's a good, uh, good analogy. Let's not be goldfish. The next challenge, also a favorite of mine, it's, it's, this one is like, this one just is a sheer impact. This is gonna, this is gonna 2X, 4X, 10X, the R R ROI if we do it well. It's about, because uh, you know, within that uh, catalyst work, the basic building block is the quality of proposals. So, so like the, the higher the quality of proposals, you know, th that's like the limiting, the main limiting factor of like how good can we be? So let's go, let's find, let's get entrepreneurs, the best entrepreneurs from all over the world, the most creative people, the most ambitious people, the hardworking people to learn about Catalyst, join in, propose uh, blowing our minds with what they're capable of doing and and their fresh insights. Uh, I think probably the best thing would be some kind of collaboration with existing community members that understand well the, the technology and constraints and the culture, etc. But let's get some more, let's get outsiders, proposers uh, to come in. You wouldn't believe how much value we're gonna get out of this. Um, so this is $50,000 and this is like straight out marketing, marketing community building. So it's like, it's about, we're gonna measure the media coverage we're gonna get. Uh, we're gonna look at numbers of ideas su submitted from new members of the community. And we're gonna look at, at what kind of the quality of those outsider proposals. Like what, how much does, uh, how much rating do they get from the review of community advisors? This is like a really big one. Um, you know, I, I, I got a lot of uh, feedback from marketing people are like, where's the marketing stuff? Like we can just, you know, what, what about like, uh, you know, we're tired of the, everything is about developers. This is your chance to shine. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna do a good job here. You know, this, this is gonna be, this fun, is, this challenge is gonna increase in size. And, uh, you know, if, if we see good, good, out, good outcomes. So that the gauntlet is in your court. The ball is in your court. The ball is in your court. Then next is about meaningful engagement. So it's about onboarding and, and, and Peyton said like value onboarding. So, so Peyton was uh, uh, really helped with this, uh, this challenge definition. So thank you so much for your contribution. Um, so the question here is like, Okay, so we have 8,000 members, okay, but how can we get as many of them to actually meaningfully participate in Catalyst in the next two funds? So again, immediate, we, we, have, to, we have to build our capacity uh, to withstand the amount of, 
of proposals, of challenges, of participants, of funds. You know, we have to increase our capacity and we have to do it now. So this is very similar to the two other challenges. We need to get started immediately. And I really encourage people to just forge ahead and do what's needed. And uh, so this is another 50K and you, dollars in ADA. And basically we're gonna look at the numbers, okay? That the meaningful participation numbers that are being generated by those proposers from increasing participation in town hall, uh, increasing the amounts of voters, increasing the amounts of uh, community advisors, increasing the numbers of proposers, increasing the numbers of referrers, and even, you know, maybe stretching the what meaningful participation means and, and inventing, in, like, you know, uh, we don't have to limit ourselves to these metrics. You know, we can come up with, like, we can discover that there's, like, a lot of other ways to meaningfully participate that we can raise. So that's the beauty of these, these challenges. Your, your creativity is your only limiting factor. We're, we're not going to limit your imagination and the way you, you 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 approach solving the meaningful participation challenge okay lastly we have uh, not lastly but one before last we, we i wanted to invite uh, eva on stage to come uh, to come and talk about uh, this uh, special cf challenge Um, and yeah, it was a joy, joy working with her. And and uh, I think this is this challenge is gonna be a big hit. So I hope I hope I hope we manage to beam her up to the stage soon. Hey, Dor. Ray, hi, welcome. Hi, hi, hi so, everyone. Yeah, do, do you want me to just uh, run the slides in the background? Do you want to, or do you just want to be like uh, your face in the video? What, what's, what's better for you? The slides are okay, <laughs> run them in the background. Okay, let, let me know when you want me to move to the next slide. Yes, I will, thank you. So hi, everyone. Um, first of all, big compliment and to all of you who participate and contribute to this largest or soon to be largest uh, funding and innovation, decentralized funding and innovation platform. Um, Dor, I think you say it correctly. I think we can write or do history here. Super, super happy and super curi curious to be part of it. Thanks a lot. So let me quickly introduce you to the first Cardano Foundation Challenge, the so-called CF Challenge. Um, it's a bit a different approach we would like to experiment with here. Um, as mentioned, it's like a Cardano Foundation Challenge. So the reason why we call it that way is because the winners of the challenge will closely work with the Cardano Foundation, with our team. Um, the concept is comparable actually to uh, for those of you have, who have participated to a hackathon, um, there you have the possibility to either solve a wicked problem, as Dor mentioned, or you work on a concrete mission that is introduced by a company or an organization um, which, which accompanies you to, to solve a, a particular problem or, or to solve an issue. So this is a bit the, the same model. and. Um, this actually is what we're trying to achieve here. First of all, the, the goal is that we from CF, um, that we can directly assume our role as facilitator and mentor to help the community to grow and thrive. And secondly, and this goes back what Charles mentioned at the beginning, um, that um, the further we go, the more participants we want to invite and onboard into Catalyst. I mean, it's amazing what we've already achieved and already, uh, again, big compliment to, to Dor and the team. But um, going forward, the goal is to have more participants, um, innovation team, enterprises, et cetera, um, to, to guide them into Catalyst. And um, with us participating in this mission, we can actually, or what we try to do is to test the user experience 
uh, to test the UX um, of the pro of Project Catalyst from a from an enterprise perspective and gain some some valuable insights. Hopefully, hopefully to which will help us then in the future to onboard um, other participants as well. So this is also some sort of a, an an, um, an experiment for us, but we are super excited. Uh, we have a whole team in the back who's who can't wait to to work with the community on on the challenge. Um, as you can see here on this slide, <laughs> now I come to it. The name of the challenge is called Local Community Centers, short LCC. Um, the idea behind it is, uh, I mean, one of one of our key strengths is actually we have a very large and engaged community. And um, if we want to do really good growth, um, growth hacking and marketing, we actually should leverage and build on our key strength. So this is actually the core of, of our question, of our key question, which is how can we mobilize the community to solve local problems using Cardano through a local community center model supported by the Cardano Foundation? Um, the reason why it's supported by the Cardano Foundation is also because we are going to be the one, if we successfully implement it, we are going to be the one uh the, the the one unit or, or um the, the part who will maintain it until we are fully decentralized or uh until we have an open source solution um that manages this 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 particular project um so what we envision for this um for this model or for the different community centers uh they could actually be um they could actually be a center for developers, it could be a DeFi or a DAO center, or it could be a business center solving a local problem. Um, as mentioned, we are here much more narrow in, in the mission or in the challenge, because I think that's going to be um, needed in order to provide the participants and the contributors the, the, the needed support. And yes, I think in terms of support, uh, what we have in the back is we have, of course, um, the technical team that will support the team, which is Mel and, and Jeremy. You already know them from, from the metadata workshops or probably some of you. Uh, they, will, they are excellent experts also when it comes to metadata. Maybe that can be included. We will have legal support from Jana, our legal counsel, um, Fred and I, I, the CEO, we will give business and, and marketing support or mentoring um, or whatever it's going to be needed. And then we have a community and communication specialist joining the team. And uh, now it's time to go to the next slide, please. So, um, yeah, as mentioned, did we how can we measure if we mobilize the community and solve those local problems we were talking about. Um, the measures we have defined so far as the number of number of local community centers it can be through a license or depending on the model, but um, the number that we actually, that community members apply for, and then secondly, the number of the community centers we effectively built, and then thirdly, the number of the members that will that those community centers hopefully will help us to onboard. That can be new DAFs, enterprises, thought leaders, etc. So, as I mentioned, we are super excited, and uh, yeah. Can can I ask you? A <laughs> hmm? Can I ask you a question? Of course. Okay. So, um, can you like? Even, even you know, it doesn't have to be a perfect example, but like some example of a proposal, like that, like uh, that you would like to see that that addresses this uh, problem. Just, just for as an example. Um, I can probably be a bit, yeah, I could bring an example, but I don't want to narrow it too much down. But probably a good example is, I, I guess, most of you know TEDx. Um, and TEDx is actually a very strong brand. They have a very good model for, in this case, events. And what they do is actually that you can uh, you can go to their page and 
say like, hey, I, I would like to become a TEDx ambassador or organize a TEDx event. And then you have like, um, first of all, a, an application process which tells you what you need to do, which is also a mean of like protecting the brand. And I think that's still something we need to solve in the challenge. It's about, yes, enabling the community to use our brand, but at the same time, make sure that, that it's used in the right manner, right? So they have this process where it clearly says, um, what you can expect, what you have to, um, what you have to fulfill, uh, what the framework is, and once you apply, you get particular means in order to to represent that brand. And that is probably a similar model, but in this case, it's more. It's of course, it's it's focused on on event management and, and events. And but that's probably the closest I can I can think of as an example, if that helps. So it's like proposing like a, a format for like let's say like local local events. It's not the format itself. It's more how can we mobilize the community. So more a model of, okay, what platform portal needs to be there that if I am a community member and I'm located, um, I'm located in Spain, for example, and I would like to build a, a, a Cardano um, community center, what exactly, what process uh, and what um, framework do I have which allows me to apply for, to become or to build such, such a community center? This is the core of the mission or the core of the challenge. So how can the process and the models and the resources, how should they be defined? Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Anything else you want to add before we move on? That's it. Okay, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I think this is going to be a big hit. Um, I love to see. I love to see what 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 comes out of it. What kind of uh, amazing proposals we, we're going to get? Thank you, Eva. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we did the big challenges. Now we're going to go to the trickiest one, which is the Fun6 challenge setting challenge. Why do I say it's tricky? Because we learned that in Fun3, it wasn't such an easy ride with this. Uh, we called it community choice challenge, and uh, there was like a lot of confusion what it is, because it's very meta. It's like about, it's like a challenge for setting new challenges. And it's not that easy to, it's not intuitive, uh, but it is really important. So let's talk about it, and and hopefully this time around will, you know, people will 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 get it, you know, from the get go, and we'll get even higher quality proposals. So then the question here is, what challenges should the community prioritize to address in Fund Six? Okay, so this is four hundred thousand dollars in ADA. That funding doesn't go to proposals for solutions. Okay, this is like the budget the total budget for all those challenges that are going to be generated, okay? So example, like the local community center has a 50K budget, right? So this is, uh, you know, so, so, you know, there will be one, so there will be like a, a challenge here that's um, like, uh, you know, if it's like a 50K challenge, you know, that's like take 50K out of the total 400K. So for example, you can imagine four different challenges that get proposed and selected, each one for 100K, or, or you can even have 400 challenges, each one is as a budget of, of 1K. Um, let's look at this table, okay, just to make it really clear what's, what's the difference between a regular challenge and the fun six challenge setting, because it's a very different type. Okay, a regular challenge, it calls, it's, it's about, uh, it's a call for proposals, right, to address the challenge. And here, the proposals are actually to suggest new challenges, okay? Um, in a regular challenge, the funds, like one, if, if, the, if the proposal is selected, you know, the, the funds in the proposal go to the, to the proposing team to go and execute. Here, the funds don't go to the proposing team. The funds are just becomes, are become the budget of the new challenge. Then you get it, and then it's like, uh, you know, in regular challenge, like once you, 
once you win funding, you become part of the Catalyst cohort, you get lots of support. Uh, here, you don't. Like, uh, I mean, we haven't figured out completely the formula. Maybe those proposing it would be kind of part of like, take part in measuring the success or metrics. Uh, maybe we'll involve them in some way, but they're not like officially part of the, the cohort yet. And lastly, you know, when we look at the when we look at the outcomes, you know, we look at the execution of proposals, the quality of execution, and what what was the ROI generated. And here we're not looking directly. There is no direct ROI. Like what's generated is is the proposals that come inspired from the challenge. So we're going to measure them, the ROI from them. Okay, I hope that's clear. You know, in the end of this town hall, I'll. I'll I'll be here for questions. Not only that, but um, I'm just going to say, like, you know, following fund three in the confusion, you know, I want to I want to do a direct, direct intervention to 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 make it easier. So we're going to do a workshop next week. So after the town hall, um, we're going to sit together, like all the people who want to write a, a community challenge, a proposal for a community challenge to set a new challenge. And we, we're going to work. We're going to work together. Um, you know, I'm going to give you prompts, and we're going to fill up, write the text, and write a draft, and 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 people will be re review it for you, and you know, will give you a chance to iterate and improve it. So, you know, after after the end of the town hall next week, stick around. All those people who want to submit new challenges. Okay, but okay, but what's the criteria? How do we know? At the end of this challenge, we're going to ask ourselves how well did we did the selected challenges perform in terms of proposal quality and community engagement. So we did these challenges uh, that that were selected, you know, voted by the community. Did they did they were were engaging and and did would they inspire high quality proposals? So we're going to look at uh, how the community advisors are giving a score. For the ten top top ten percent of proposed challenges, we're going to look at uh, how community advisors score the the proposals that are generated to address the challenge, and we're going to look at the voter engagement, uh, the general voter engagement with those with those challenges. So hope that helps clear that up. Um. So I want to talk a bit about insight sharing um, and and uh, the first week of Fund Four. Okay, so now that you now you learned about all the different challenges, I'm sure your head is like very <laughs> stretched out. Um, but we're gonna start simple. So we, we all we want to do this week, you know, this is not you know, it's not time to make proposals yet. This is this is time to look into those challenges, each each challenge in itself. And for each challenge, we want you to to do two things. Okay, so so and everybody can submit. Okay, you don't need to be a proposer. You just need to have a person with a brain and that care enough to to take a few minutes of thinking to participate. Um. And you're going to ask yourself two questions. So, so what gaps do you see in how this challenge is currently addressed? So for each one of those things, you know, it's there's some, you know, dev ecosystem, there's initiatives that are, you know, there's some existing tooling, you know. Uh, so there is already some current way we address it, but where are there gaps? You know, wh where where are we, where are the stuff that is, uh, could provide a lot of value and maybe is not addressed right now? So. An example would be, let's say, the, the dev, the, the, for the developer ecosystem, let's say, um, you know, you don't see any JavaScript uh, binding libraries. Okay, that could be a gap. Okay, we, we really need this because, you know, people want to, JavaScript is very popular and, you know, we want some easier way uh, for JavaScript developers to de develop on top of Cardano. Okay, so like that could be a gap you can indicate. Okay, but there's many other gaps, you know, all, are, all about, you know, this is just about libraries. What about tooling? What about training? What about education? What about uh, solving problems for developers? There's so many gaps, okay? So we want to hear your voice and 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 specifically for the, the ecosystem challenge, 
This is actually going to be part of the, the metrics that we're going to measure at the end. And the second thing is like, as you look at the challenge, like, can you read the brief that we will publish probably around tomorrow? You know, can we improve the brief? You know, like, uh, you know, is there some metrics we can better, um, like, fine, fine tune? Um, is there more examples that we can provide? Is there some questions that you have that, 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 that you know, some ambiguity about the challenge? So we want you to post it as insight in ID scale. So tomorrow you will see the interface is going to change. We're going to announce this in the Telegram channel. And we want you to spend the first week not thinking about solutions, but thinking about the problem. Okay, this is ABC of problem solving. You need to understand the problem from multiple perspectives before proposing a solution, or you risk uh, having uh, suboptimal solutions that that you know don't are not generated from really understanding the problem. Uh, we have proof, okay? There was like many, many dozens, and I mean, dozens is good. Like, I mean, I think it was like around fifty or more uh, of crowdsourcing campaigns that were done that. Uh, and very meticulous research, research done and that shows that when, when you start with this collaborative model, when you first talk about the problem and, and understand the problem before jumping to solutions, you get a 26% jump in the, in the ROI, okay, or, or in their terms, in the innovativeness rating, okay? So this is a really meaningful contribution. And this is a great way for new people to come and, and, you know, even if you don't have a full proposal ready, you know, you can come jump in in a few minutes and make a really good contribution to, to Catalyst and Cardano. So I really encourage you to participate. So how do you actually post your insights? So you register in ID scale, there's a link, and I hope Anna is sharing. You can pick a challenge. You have something to say about. So... I think around tomorrow you will see all these challenges in a Discal website. They're not there yet. And then you post your insights. Okay, so you talk about the some gap that you see or suggesting how to improve the challenge brief or a question that you have. Uh, go for it. This really, really helps. We then, after that, we archive those questions and insights and proposers can go and look at them and, and it can really help help us be more intelligent. It's really important that to say that, you know, this is not time to post proposals. We had that happen uh, in fund two and a bit, a bit less in fund three, but people were just like, ah, okay, this is like proposal time. It's not proposal time. It's inside sharing time. Proposal time is in one week from now, you will have a different, slightly different interface where you can actually submit proposals. So, uh, you know, don't, don't, um, just, just be mindful. Okay, so we have two more small things to have. I told you it's going to be a long town hall. Um, first of all, we're still looking for a product owner and someone to work with me closely. Uh, this is the application. So we'd love to get someone from the community. Um, feel free to come uh, apply. If you have experience being a product owner and you really care and you feel really enthusiastic about this project and its vision. Um, I'd love to. I'd love to work with you. So, apply. Um, let's see. Is Greg? Is Greg around? Because uh, I believe, like, I'm not sure if it's. We wanted to bring uh, Greg, who was working with uh, on, on the new assessment stage for community advisors, to, to talk a bit about it. Um, I'm not sure if he's here. I didn't receive confirmation. I am. OK. Greg Pendlebury. Okay, let's uh, let's bring him. Let's beam him up uh, because we did like like the whole. I mean the the big thing is that um, 
is that we seen in this fund this this amazing initiative, this bottom up initiative from community advisors. They just took took a challenge and they they really leveled up and prototype a whole new process for assessments and and you know it's so significant and important it's imp i want i want i really although it's already a long town hall i really wanted to hear from greg and talk about it because it's it's so inspiring so uh uh greg do you want like do you have your slides or like how's the or you want to just talk about it um not not slides but uh i can kill people with boredom of a spreadsheet okay screen shared on this one before. And I do apologize, it has been a long town hall, long enough that my toddler just woke up um, and is in the room. Let's see how that goes. So you should be seeing the uh, wonderful spreadsheet here. Um, thank you, Dor, and hello to everyone. Um, I confess I missed probably 20, 30 seconds before I came on. Um, Crowdcast does something pretty funky as I join, it kicks me out and lets me back in. But just to give some context for um, what the community advisors were dealing with in fund three, I think we had around 9,000 reviews um, come in from the community. There was, a, you know, catalyst. the Catalyst team provided that to us as a data dump. So there was probably a few hours of work just in massaging that into some sort of format that the, the CAs could work with. Um, and there's, there's been sort of a mixed bag in terms of that. And we're learning a lot um, in, in terms of getting access to the analytics on that uh, to try and improve the process going forward. There were about or more than 6,000 blank reviews in there. So those are immediately filtered out. Um, and we're very much laying the tracks in front of the train here. So I will not say that the process that we followed was perfect, um, but we are learning. What we sort of developed was a little bit of a vocabulary that is emerging. I'm not going to say it's locked in, but uh, there's been a group called the Veteran CAs. So those were people who got rewards out of Fund 2. And there were about 60 of those, and they were all offered a chance to then assess the, the reviews that came out of Fund 3. Um, 20 of those people took up that offer, uh, and all of these spreadsheets that I've got, um, I'm just going to show one of them, but they're all available in the Telegram chat and we've got the Discord community as well. Uh, and you can see that they were all asked, if you're going to do this, you need to do it publicly. So their names will be in the spreadsheet, and you can see where they've looked at the reviews and decided, um, you know, this is either a justified or an unjustified review. Um, and we're very conservative in our approach here. Um, so our, our attempt is not to say that we agree with what this review says, but just that it is uh, following the process we agreed. So um, the general consensus is that a, a, a justified review actually has to justify the score that they gave. So if the score and the the comment are disconnected, then it's not really valid. It doesn't help the proposers, voters, or the community at large. Uh, and it actually has to demonstrate that they read the proposal. So if you see things that are commented on the review that are directly contradicted by proposal text, we try and leave that out as well. Um, as I said, the, 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 pro hey, the quality Greg, of the process. Sorry? Hey, Greg, I, I, I'm hearing some commenting from the crowd that are very hard to understand. I, I think they missed like a small piece of context. Like you, you, you took a deep dive, which is amazing. But uh, I just want to give an extra bit of context. Okay, so fund three. Okay, we had a community advisors because a lot of people are new here. So in fund three, we had um, community advisors that came and and gave a review on proposals. Okay, so so these had uh, very specific guidelines that were they were given. They were supposed to give a a five star, like one to five stars rating based on three criteria for each proposal, like uh, the impact, the feasibility, and the auditability of each proposal. And we did that also in fund two, and it was went pretty well. Um, but um, we noticed that the system, it has some vulnerability, it can be gamed. So like someone can come in and volunteer to be community advisor, 
and then he can, uh, you know, either try to game the system or he can try to uh, just be a sh like a bad advisor, you know, like like give re really toxic comments and things that are not productive, or just be unfair or not even bother reading uh, or not providing a rationale. So so that challenge was posed to the to the to the community advisor group as like, what can we do to do a better job in Fansuri? So they established this process that Greg is describing that is basically reviewing the reviewers. So we asked uh, proposers to come and to come in and highlight, like we, we shared with proposers the reviews they received, and we asked them to report if, if any review that was given, they think it's like unjustified. Okay, it was like super unfair or like super toxic or, you know, or, you know, you know, people just didn't bother re the actual reading the proposal, etc. So this is like a an early defense mechanism. And what is Greg is describing is like what we did when we when we got these reports. So handing it back to you, Greg. Thank you. Sorry, the unmute part is <laughs> difficult to find. Um, yeah, thank you for the context, or I apologize, I didn't set that up or frame that correctly. Um, but I, I also kind of didn't want to dwell on the spreadsheet. I wanted to, to zoom past it and just say, this is the format and, and the focus from my perspective and a lot of the community's perspective was that notion of transparency and making sure that if we're going to try and say that there's a problem with the review, we can't do it from a position of anonymity. Um, and we, we definitely want a, a very broad consensus. Um, I, don't, I won't say we got to the broad consensus part and in our lessons learned, that's um, one of our focuses. So in the end, our criteria was largely that it must have been, that each review must have been assessed by at least three veterans and they all had to agree that this was unjustified. Um, that list basically removes only 10 reviews. So. Basic, when we when we saw that there were gaps in our processes, we just decided to be extremely conservative. But it, I think this goes back to that idea of embracing, I actually don't want to call this a failure in a way, but I think a lot of the veteran CAs hoped that we would clear out more, but what we've done is actually have a really hard good look at our processes. So um, what I would encourage anyone who's interested in the process and in building the process to do is head over to the Discord server um, there's been really great involvement from a broad set of the community in building out um, sort of breakout channels in Discord, trying to evolve this process moving forward. Um, and to just frame this in some context, Fund 2, as I mentioned, that we had no quality assessment. Fund 3, we've been building the process at the same time as following the process. Um, and so we have taken some out. Um, but Fund 4, I expect this is going to get a lot better and we've got a lot of engagement from the community in terms of how to do that. Um, I wanted to just focus on a couple of high level notes that have already come out in that Discord. Um, communications are huge. Uh, we know they haven't been perfect and the th things have been evolving really fast here. Uh, and it has already been flagged as well that on top of the timeline, there's, there's access to good communications for non-English speakers. So if you are a multilingual member of the community, I really, really invite you to get involved there. Um, even if you don't want to be involved in, the, in the, the quality control side of things, it's important that we have communication channels. Um, Broadly, there's things like, from our perspective, trying to get guidelines for, so the CAs are following simple processes and criteria. Then when we talk about this sort of um, vetting process that we all have a similar set of guidelines for, for that as well. Um, there's a lot of concern over our ability to scale this up. So you've seen the numbers coming down the pipe for fund four, fund five, and we expect this to go larger. So we really need to iterate on this. Um, and I'm going to mention communication again because it's <laughs> it's doubly important and also how to do all of that transparently, not only through the process but after the process. What, what vehicle works for you guys to actually see this sort of output because I don't think spreadsheets are what you want to come in and see and, and reiterating that whole explanation and process every fund is going to get tedious as well. So really just a continuum and a pipeline. Um, and I might uh, end out with, I told the team I was going to quote him, 
because the internet is a wonderful place and rescued cookie 22 had a great <laughs> had a great paragraph in discord and he said i was personally amazed by the entire process and the quantitative feedback it may potentially lead to the creation of an unexpected somewhat intangible new layer of foundational strength for the Cardano ecosystem. We will see the true value of Cardano is the entire social system that is being built around it. The code may be open source and be combined freely, but on the other hand, the people supporting it and sharing the Cardano dream from the early days are a unique group. Let's continue to capitalize on that. So I heartily endorse that and lots of people in Discord did as well. It was quite a good expression. Um, thank you for your time, everyone, and all. Wow, yes. And Gregory, I really appreciate you and your leadership. And I think I think this is just like uh, the evolution because Greg was also the author of our first uh, expert ballot uh, suggestion. So uh, where you know, he did really detailed analysis, you know, looked at the big picture, really did a detailed analysis of all proposals and like uh, looked at it from different metrics and like how they can combine together and, and what set of proposals would be like the ideal set to vote on to achieve a, you know, maximal kind of like challenge ROI. It was really, really impressive. And it just, you know, I don't know, I'm just very, very impressed with your contribution. And of course the contributions of, you know, we had 130 people join a special Telegram channel. And I think more people on the Discord that were all just basically you know, for many, now I think like for two weekends now, we've been like working hard on this, like mostly in the weekends, like also during the days, but like just like trying to solve this huge problem. This problem was not really solved by like, let's say like Amazon, right? Like Amazon is still having really hard time with, with reviews for products. So, you know, if they didn't solve it in like 10 years and billions of dollars and like, you know, and you know, I wouldn't expect us to solve it right away. It's an iterative process. Um, and it's been like very courageous, I think, for, for the community to do it and conclude it. And I know there was like a lot of manual work, many hours of people just like grinding away at a spreadsheet and, and making sense of it. And, you know, and, and I think I speak for myself in behalf of, of the rest of the community. Thank you so much for improving our the quality of decision making, making our decision making system more resilient, making the community advisors more legitimate. So really, you know, you and 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 everybody else that was involved in this process. All right, saying that uh, I have a Thank few you. more slides. Thank you. Saying that I have a few more slides to go, and we're almost done. And then I'll take some questions. It's been like the longest town hall ever, <laughs> breaking records here, making history in the longest town halls. <laughs> okay, actually, it's very, very short. So uh, that slide. All right, taking taking everything we did today all in. What's what's actually actually the next steps from you? Okay, so register to vote. Step one. Step two. Tomorrow, once uh, we launch a scale. Go submit your insights about the challenges. Let's, let's launch the insight sharing phase for Fund 4. And lastly, uh, join the announcement Telegram channel. So this is a great format. Um, the Telegram channel is a great format for you to get just like signal and no noise, like just like, like submissions is starting, like submission is ending, uh, voting starting, registration start, voting registration starting, ending. Here's the snapshot. Like all the really in critical information is just gonna be sent there in a one way, one way direction, and just to keep you kind of up to date with and informed. So do join that uh, Telegram channel. Um, I hope someone, someone in the control room is sharing the link to the Telegram channel. And and that's uh, that's it. So I think I'm gonna stick around for a few more minutes and look at questions. So the way it works is like there's like a little ask a question tab and there's votes on it. So usually I tackle the most voted on questions first, and then like uh, you know just deal with them like uh, you know then prioritize until time run out run, time runs out. So let's let's get, let's give ourselves like 15 minutes for questions. 
Okay, 0D1N is asking, how people with less than 3,000 ADA votes for developing countries see 3,000 ADA with current price tag is almost one year living expense, exclamation point. Will the voting cost be reduced? I learned that this is to prevent botting. Isn't there any other ways to prevent this, e.g. like wallet creation date? So, yeah, thanks. I mean, we... I, I I respect that question. I think it's important question for us to ask and uh, definitely worth to answer. Um, it's complicated. We need, um, we basically have, it's not just about the tax, it's also about the capacity to, basically our, our, our I don't know if I want to go into the technical details, but basically there are some technical, hard technical limitations that force us to put this. Uh, part of it is about uh, optimizing for time of tallying, and we're we have engineers working to optimize that. So the the better they become at op optimizing um, how we count and decrypt and tally the votes, the the lower the threshold can can be. Uh, so I expect that from iteration, and it, between it, iteration and iteration, that the threshold will keep 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 getting lower. Um, I think over time we might present some some tools for people that hold small amounts of ADA to kind of like batch their like to delegate their voting power to, you know, to 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 delegate, you know, so, so, so like the union of. Uh, of of uh, people with not a lot of ADA and and they can have substantial voting power like it's definitely on our minds definitely important we're doing our best we're, we're trying not to break the system uh, so slowly and st steadily we will we will we will get there I understand the I understand the frustration all I have to say is that voting is just one aspect uh, of catalyst actually. There is, uh, I think, 80% of, of the budget goes to proposing. So, you know, uh, then there you have another 5% that goes for community advisors. And then you have uh, another 2% that goes to referrers. So all these activities doesn't require any amount of ADA, and it's like more, you know, it's almost 90% of, of the funds are, are goes to people like that. So... Uh, uh, so even if you have less than 3,000 ADA, you, there's so many venues for you to contribute to Catalyst. And, you know, we, we don't we don't ask for any submission fees, you know, stuff like that for submit a proposal. So, you know, it's not a perfect solution, but um, I think I think it's I think it's um, a decent one for now. So I hope I hope that helps and. And yeah, it's important for us. We continue to work and update. It was, uh, the threshold was uh, in fund two, it was, uh, I believe, 8,000 ADA. Okay, so we're, we're, we're advancing pretty rapidly with that. Carl Philipp Simon is asking, how can I participate in the voting with a ledger hardware wallet? Uh, you can't, we don't have hardware wallet integration yet. Um, it's being worked on, and we will announce when it's ready. Uh, I'm sure the community can think about some creative workarounds where people can like temporarily transfer funds to a to a non-hardware wallet, you know, to circumvent that. You know, we we don't support it directly, but there might be uh, creative solutions out there. You know, just be be careful. I'm sure if you have a hardware wallet, you're already careful. So, you know, just make sure to. You know, whatever you do, do it do it in, in a secure and safe way and you feel comfortable with and, and do, do your own research. Jake, will Catalyst eventually be fully integrated into Daedalus or will it always be a separate entity? Love the, Card the Cardano community so much. Love you all. Um, it's it's a, it's on a roadmap. We're we're working on. We want to you know. I think ideally we want it fully integrated. And there's some. We definitely designed the voting app, and it's like when we made the decisions about 
the basic architecture of it and the we know we fought about forward compatibility with Daedalus. Um, so I think it will happen this year. Um, can't can't commit to dates uh, yet, but uh, but but uh, it will. And I think in the meantime, you know, enjoy enjoy the voting. I mean, enjoy the using uh, voting in a mobile device. Isn't that cool? <laughs> okay. How do I vote? Dates of voting being integrated into Daedalus Wallet? Khader is asking. So, uh, well, go to the town hall. I just made the whole demo of how uh, I demoed how to vote, how to register to vote. Okay, and register to vote is as simple as opening cat, uh, Daedalus 3.30. And going through a very quick process uh, to and and in that in that list itself you'll get instructions how to actually vote like uh, download the catalyst voting app there's like a lot of documentation i'm sure the community is going to make some videos i'm going to i'm going to talk about it in the town hall once voting starts um and and you know if you want to stay on top of of dates go join the catalyst announcement telegram channel Uh, okay, votes. Uh, sorry, uh, Kobov nine thousand. How can we bring Catalyst to those who do not speak English? Um, I think you. That's a great question. I think I think you can. I think it, like at this scale. One of the reasons we chose it that they have really good support for different languages. So, but you can do it only manually. Like, like you, you can you can have uh, people translate and manually translate like all the proposals and discussions, etc., or like the essential parts. It's of course uh, a big task, um, but maybe someone can propose to the community and they can vote and fund a translator for different languages to to do that. So this is one. One way to include people in the innovation process. You also need to think about ways to translate proposals written in this language back to English, right? So, they, so that's like a lot of work. But if the community wants to prioritize and fund that, that that's awesome. Um, I think in the voting app itself, um, we will. I mean, definitely, we, we're gonna add like support for for Japanese. Um that's all the plans we currently have. Um, yeah, and I think I think a lot of it is, you know, a, a, is a formidable challenge. I think it's I mean, I think one way you can one way to to deal with it if if a community member comes and actually makes a challenge, uh, set a challenge for translation of the catalyst thing and then like you know the community can come in with local people who know both languages that can do all those all sorts of tasks to make it accessible and we will definitely work with them to to make it possible because that's a uh, that would be very impactful so thank you for raising this making make, uh, raising this question uh jay klein is asking Will we have to upgrade our Yoroi wallet for Gogan like we did for Shelly? I don't know. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Don't work either in the Yoroi team or in the Gogan team. Uh, so, I mean, I can guess. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> the, answer is, the answer is ask someone who from the Yoroi team or the Gogan team that. Um, okay. Arve is asking, if I have a Yeroi wallet, do I have to vote the same way as last time and have a new QR code? Um, well, you know, like you kind of vote the same way. I mean, you need to update your voting app because now we'd like, like deploy the new version on the app, app and iOS store. So make sure to upgrade that. And we added some like categorization according to challenges there. So. You have, you know, you, you pretty much have to upgrade it to to participate. Um, 
your old QR codes are no longer valid. I would save them as memorabilia. So you can say one day for your grandchild, you know, that you were like in fun four, <laughs> you know, fun three, that you had fun three QR code. That's like, like, uh, that would be really cool. I'm sure, I'm sure your, your grandchild will be excited about that, maybe. Um, but yeah, you would need to generate a new QR code through your Roy extension, okay? Not the browser extension. No more. We're not supporting mobile yet. Tevo, I like Tevo. Let's talk about Catalyst Investment Fund product owner. Okay, let's talk about it. What kind of experience you would expect the candidates have? How often you think you are going to have meetings with this position? And why? So, yes, Steve. Steve mentioned that there is a the job 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 description in the IOHK website, and you can really go. You know, you can really learn about all of this in in detail. I would say, just at the top of my head. Okay, so, um. You need to be an experienced product owner, like a really capable one, one that's good at uh, you know fulfilling the traditional aspects of being a product owner, like uh, writing documentation and using prioritization frameworks, um, managing a, a you know grooming and managing a backlog and stuff like that, you know, but very high quality, uh, proven experience, but. And then there's all the extra stuff that comes as working on Catalyst, which is like one of the things. Uh, one of the things would be like kind of like to own the the problem sensing challenge that we have in Catalyst right now. So problem sensing challenge is like when people uh, mention there's like issues in the process or offer improvements, and like actually go through it and prioritize it and apply framework so we can address and prioritize it and and add some of these address some of this like in any iteration like the most important ones um i think another one is is uh, it just basically enhancing the feedback cycle between the community and catalyst team so it's almost like a position and a half okay cuz uh to work at and i think you know i'm looking for someone with some fire you know, like passion that's like really into this project and the vision and that that uh, because we have like a good energy going right now in the team and and that person is going to be be a leader in the team. So, you know, a bit of fire. It's good. Um, OK, Michael Bellen is asking. Or Mi Mich Michiel. Michiel Bellen? Are there already Cardano-related art projects on a global scale? Would this kind of project also be eligible for funding from Catalyst? Well, you'll be eligible for funding if the community finds you eligible for funding. The way to make sure you're, to make sure you're, to increase your chances of being found eligible by the community you probably need to look at the challenges that are presented and and see how your if your proposal actually addresses the challenges because uh, you know so if it if it relates if if your art project is related somehow to you know bringing new proposals to catalyst or uh, encouraging people to engage, engage more deeply or uh, you know and creates a cool a cool dev community or or you know then and you can and you can make a convincing case and convince enough people from the community to vote for you, plus the community advisors to 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 rate you favorably. Then then yes, you're gonna be eligible for funding. Um, you can also propose a challenge to do art, you know, to to generate art from Cardano. You know, we can have like a we can have like a small fund to explore that and see what 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 get generated. Um, okay, so we have, okay, I mean, 
So I was actually just about to comment. So BR one con was asking, so what's the bird? And and actually I have a list of all the birds and the exact dates of all the upcoming uh, all the upcoming big news that's coming from Cardano. Uh, but we are out of time. So unfortunately, you know, tune in next week to Town Hall and maybe maybe then I'll address all the questions about the birds. So hope you enjoy the town hall. And um, you know, it's, it was two hours. <laughs> next next funding round, we're gonna we're gonna figure out how to not introduce so many things at the same time. So uh, uh, we're still learning, and that's that's the spirit right now. We're early experimentation stage, taking things to the edge, seeing how far we can go. Uh, enjoy, enjoy Fund4, enjoy voting, enjoy feeling emancipated that you can, your vote, your, it's your vote. It's also your argument, convincing other people about things. We're, we're going to go into a six week decision making process right now with the Fund3 proposals. So much to learn from that and how to improve it. And it's your initial experience right now and how you process it and how we iterate on it that's, that's gonna turn this into something even better and more impactful. So good luck and congratulations to all of us. What a beautiful day of celebration and see you next week.